In this video, we'll explore the Eddy Kramer base channel. Now, like all of the plugins in the Eddy Kramer collection, they were designed to implement techniques that Eddy Kramer used frequently. And to that end, as soon as you insert the base channel or one of the other plugins, you'll probably hear a difference right away. So let's take a look at the plugin to start. Now, over here at the top left, we have a large VU meter, and it can meter input or our output level. That's convenient because at the very end stage of the plugin, we have an output gain control. So as we work with the plugin, it's nice to compare input and output level and use this output gain for level matching between input and output. That's especially nice when you're comparing the plugin versus when it's bypassed. Now to the right of our VU meter, we have two base modes or flavors. We have base one and base two. And these are two of Eddie Kramer's preferred settings. To toggle between the two, just click one button or the other. So now I'm looking at base two. And you'll notice as I change between base one and two, the parameters below change as well. So if I click back to base one, all these parameters change. So these settings affect these settings. Now a word of advice, when you start using the base channel on a track, try auditioning these two first before you change any of the parameters below. That's because if I change one of these and I go over to base two and then come back to base one, this parameter has changed back to its default setting. Now there are ways to save settings and recall them, and we'll learn that in the last video about the Wave System tool. Let's listen to the difference between bass 1 and 2. Naturally I have the bass channel inserted on a bass guitar track. You can play around with this plugin on other instruments, but I chose bass to illustrate what it can do. I'm going to solo up this bass guitar track, and we'll start with the plugin bypass, and we'll compare the bypass effect to bass 1 and bass 2. <laughs> So there's definitely an effect even just by toggling between bass 1 and 2. Bass 1 has a little less compression and a little more presence, a little more boosts in the upper mid ranges, so it makes it sound a little bit more open. Bass 2 has significantly more compression, and in this case, for this bass guitar, it sounds a little boxy to me. I don't get the high mid presence that I'm looking for, and the low frequencies get sort of buried down because of that compressor. I do like the way bass 1 sounds on this track, so I'll start with that. Now let's take a look at the rest of the parameters below. First we have sensitivity. Think of this as drive, maybe tube drive, and the more you turn it up, the more of that drive and some distortion is going to come out. Just to the right of this knob, you've got a little indicator light. And you'll notice that as I increase sensitivity, it's going to go from green to yellow, yellow to orange, and orange to red. And watch that as you listen to the bass, and you should hear the difference. <laughs> So you can get a fair amount of drive. Ideally, if you want just a little bit of edge or crunch, somewhere around orange is ideal, but that always depends on the instrument. For this bass guitar, I don't really want a lot of drive, so I'm gonna keep sensitivity relatively low. Next, we have our two EQ parameters, bass and treble. Now, our bass parameter centers right around 200 hertz, and we have a fair amount of boost that we can apply to it. Because this bass guitar track has a lot of notes in the higher registers, I want to bring out a little more low frequency, so I'm going to try increasing this. I like the way that's sounding, but you'll notice as I crank this up, it's affecting sensitivity. I started to get a little of that distortion, so I'll bring sensitivity down just a little bit. Then I can move on to the treble. Now this treble band centers around 1.5 kilohertz, so it's more in the high mid frequencies than a high frequency EQ. And this is going to help give us the sort of presence, sort of crispness that we want out of bass guitar. Now let's play with this for a moment. <laughs> I like that treble almost maxed out to give it that presence. Next we have the compression section, and this is going to behave a little bit differently between bass 1 and 2. The bass 2 compressor seems to be a bit more aggressive, perhaps a higher ratio, broader range of compression, even as you adjust the dial. Now with bass 1 you can still get a lot of compression, it just seems to be a little more gentle in the way that it compresses. I do want some more compression on this bass track, so let's play around with applying a little bit more as we listen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I like that. This dial is controlling the intensity or how much compression is being applied to the track. So again, it's a pretty simple parameter, but it is effective. The last thing I like to do is compare my input and output levels, and then I'll listen to what I've done versus bypassed. Now let's compare it by toggling bypass. I'm liking the way this is sounding. Of course, what counts the most is how it sounds in the mix, so let's listen to it. It definitely helps the bass sort of get up front and center, and I think as I work with the other tracks, drums, guitars, and vocals, it's going to help me get this bass guitar track right in the pocket where I want it. In our next video, we'll explore the Eddie Kramer guitar channel. Thanks for watching.